So, hello, I'm Amy and I'm 13 years old and I'm from Manchester. So, I'm here to talk to you about my game of life on a pie. So, how did I get interested in programming? Uh, a couple of years ago, I started going to Manchester Girl Geeks events and I think it was sometime last year they ran a Code Academy workshop. And after that, I went home and I continued learning HTML and then, and so I went to YRS which is Young Hawaii State, which is where young coders like across the country meet up at different venues and they have a week with mentors and they create a project using open source data. And then at the weekend they meet everybody from across the country, from across the UK, meets up and it's judged. Um, Rob Bishop was one of the judges there. And so after that, I started going to Ben's Raspberry Jams and I started to learn Python again using Code Academy. So if nobody's heard of Code Academy, this is the link to Code Academy. So that's how I got interested in programming because I've always wanted like to know how I can because there's it's all very well having iPads and iPhones and I just wanted to know how it works and how I could get it to do what I wanted it to do rather than the people who are working for Apple or working for Android, how they got it, what they wanted it to do. So why do I enjoy it? Well, I enjoy programming because although it may sometimes be hard or your program sometimes won't work, that like once you do get it to work, you feel really happy and you like do little happy dance. So I like that. <laughs> so, Conway's Game of Life. So how did I find out about the Raspberry Pi? Mainly on Twitter and at MadLab. MadLab is a great community centre for geeky and crafty people in the middle of Manchester around the back of So that's how I found out about the Raspberry Pi. How did I find out about the game of life, Commons Game of Life? Well, it was at one of the Manchester Raspberry Jams and Ben had just come back from Code Retreat the other day and he wanted to show me some test driven development. And so he would write, I, he'd write a test and then I'd get it to work and then I'd write a test and he'd get it to work. So that's how I created the first part of Conway's Game of Life. And that's how I found out about it. But what is Conway's Game of Life? Because I'm pretty sure some of you probably won't know what it is. So here are the rules. So any live cell with fewer than two live cells die. Live neighbours dies. As if caused by underpopulation. Any live cell with two or three live neighbours lives on to the next generation. Any live cell with more than three neighbours dies as if by overcrowding. And any dead cell with exactly three neighbours becomes a live cell as if by reproduction. So, I'll show you the first implementation of Commons Game of Life that I did. This one. So every time a cell was alive, I get it to print out a smiley face. So that's the first implementation. And okay, then the second implementation. I just control C that. Stupid thing. <laughs> okay. Right, there we go. And this one. And then. I got it so it was a screen, a small screen was shown and it plotted a coloured pixel if a cell was alive. But I thought that was a bit small because you can't really see it. So I changed it so as there was a circle and that it changes colour. So if I control that and then So this one changes colour and it does and it um, draws a circle if the cell's alive. So, yeah. So that's what I did on the computer, but I decided that perhaps having it just on the computer wasn't enough. I wanted, say, to have LEDs light up. So I created this. So a Raspberry Pi controls an Arduino, which lights up the LED matrix and I can show you a video of it working 
because it needs to plug into a screen, which I don't have with these. So. <coughs> this is a video of it working. So the Raspberry Pi use, um, does the Conrace Game of Life and it works out which cell should be alive or which cell should be dead. And it then sends a binary message to the Arduino, which then works out how to display it onto the LED matrix. So even though, so after this, what I want to do is I want to add buttons to it. So as maybe you can choose the beginning pattern, because at the moment it's completely random. So um, make it more interactive and maybe explain what it's doing, because to people who don't know what Conway's Game of Life is, it just looks like a random pattern, which it's not. Or may, and also an idea that Mr. Pierce had <laughs> was to have it so it's like instead of just showing a circle and then it disappearing when it's dead if you have like maybe a cell because it's about cell it's like a cellular simulator so you, then you have cells and you have different states of that cell so if it's been dead for one generation then it's a little bit decayed or if it's been dead for 10 de generations it's like hardly any of it left so that's something else that I want to work on so what now well, what I'd like to do is maybe incorporate Twitter into something or an idea that one of the STEM ambassadors had who was involved with the Sunflower Project. She suggested trying to get a whole school involved with the project. So you'd have people from different subjects who'd get together and they create one project that at the centre of it was a Raspberry Pi. So you could have people from computing classes, programming it, you could have people from business studies marketing it as a project and you could have art people making it look pretty and you could have maths people like, working out some of the logic. Can we get a whole school together to create something that will improve the school? So that's what I want to do next. So thank you for listening. And this is a Raspberry Pi that's got Conway's Game of Life on it. <laughs> <laughs>